So bowls have become one of my family's favorites. We love anything that you put in a bowl. We love sushi bowls, um, burrito bowls, super fun, super easy. These Cuban bowls have easily become one of my family's favorites. They are easy, they're really delicious. They are just full of texture and color and a bunch of yummy flavors that you mix together and you eat, love them. So here are the ingredients that we're gonna be using for the vegan Cuban bowls. We have some brown rice, some ripe plantains, which one of these is quite ripe. The other two, I'm hoping when I open them, they're gonna be okay, we'll see how it goes. They all came from the same bunch and they've all been the exact same spot on my counter. We'll see how it goes. I don't know why one worked out so well and the other two are still green, but we'll see. Some sweet potatoes, some black beans, some avocado, we're gonna make a little pico de gallo with some red onion, tomato, cilantro, and some salt, and some lime juice. So let's get started. So we're gonna start by putting some brown rice into my instant pot over there. And we have my cute little handy dandy pot head that will sit on there that will help so that I don't get burned with the steam or have my steam getting all up over my cabinets. Uh, I did a really cute little video about this. If you wanna watch it, go check it out here. Um, this has been a really cute, helpful tool in my kitchen that my son and daughter-in-law sent to me for Christmas. I love this little guy. He's not only cute, um, but really helpful in my kitchen. This recipe is great. I will link it down below. Um, we are gonna make it for the five of us tonight. Uh, I've made it so many times. I just kinda know exactly how much to make for my family. Um, but you can easily make this for one, for two, or just double, triple it until you can make it for a whole bunch. It's a great meal to make, especially for a lot of people because they can kind of put in the bowl what they want. They can start out with the rice and just add on top whatever they like. So um, let's go ahead and get started with the rice. Okay, so I invited Ben to come in and do a little cameo with me on this video. I was gonna do the whole thing myself because he's outside planting in the garden, but I cannot cut sweet potatoes, especially these ones. They were quite big, large monsters. They were the only thing at the store when I went shopping. I usually look for the really skinny, long ones, but these were really big ones. So I needed Ben's muscles to come in and help me cut. Okay, I'm not yeah. so good. So I want really teeny tiny. If you won't get them all like this, I can finish the job. I just need you to get through the, the big thick and get me some slices. So with the sweet potatoes, <laughs> I like to get, even on Thanksgiving, I'm always like, okay, Ben, it's your job. Time to cut the sweet potatoes for me. So um, I really like to get nice, teeny tiny little dices. Uh, they're easier when you put them in the bowls as well as for cooking purposes because sweet potatoes take a while to cook. And what you like to, what I like to do for this um, is to put them in a frying pan and uh, kind of saute them. Um, you want them to be nice and soft, but also get kind of a little crispy. Um, and they just are gonna be amazing in these bowls. So I'm gonna start cutting those up nice and teeny tiny and get them into my pan. So thanks, Ben, appreciate your help. Is that good? Perfect, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna be adding in my coconut oil here and starting to cook my sweet potato. I'm pretty much doubling the recipe. This is one of my favorites to have as leftovers. And so I'm making a little extra tonight. There we go. Got my sweet potato in there cooking. Now I'm gonna add in my cumin. Cumin is so good on the sweet potatoes. Oh, I can smell it already. It smells amazing. I'm just gonna give them a little stir so that this coconut oil will start to melt down in there and the potatoes can start softening. Okay, so we're gonna get the pico into a bowl. We're gonna get that melding so that the flavors all come together and taste really, really yummy. Um, but first, I wanted to uh, dedicate this video. Is that a thing? I don't know if that's a thing, but I'm gonna make it a thing. To my sister, Nicole. 
Um, I brought up this recipe once to her and she was like, oh, that sounds really good, but I'm just gonna wait until you make a video about it. <laughs> um, and maybe she was kidding, but I'm totally making a video about it and here it is, Nicole, so you can watch it and you can make it. Um, she's super cute and pregnant with her second baby and I'm so excited I get to see her in about a week or two. She's coming up to visit and I can't wait to see her. She's got the cutest little boy and just love her to death. She's the greatest. Um, but this video is for you, Nicole. So here we go. Okay, so we're gonna cut up the tomatoes, some red onion, some cilantro, and we're gonna add a little salt to that. And it's gonna just uh, get really yummy in this bowl here. And then that's gonna be really yum when we add it on top. And then you can mix your bowl all together and get a little bit of everything in your bite. Fantastic. So let's go ahead and get that all chopped up. tomatoes diced and cut up in a bowl and I'm getting ready to cut up my red onion but I wanted to share this fun little TikTok oh. trick <laughs> that Emery taught us. So red onions usually aren't quite as bad as white onions for me at least um, but onions make me cry. They hurt my eyes, right? So Emery saw on TikTok that onions typically, that crazy smell that burns your eyes, it goes to the nearest water source. So obviously that's your eyes, right? It goes straight to your eyes, makes your eyes start burning. If you put a wet paper towel near the onions that you are cutting, um, that whatever it is that the chemical that is the burning sensation in your eyes will go to that paper towel. And we actually have tried it uh, at least twice and it actually works, it's crazy, right? So I'm gonna cut this onion with my handy dandy little wet paper towel right there beside me and show you how easy it is to do that and not have the teary crazy wet eyes. Um, we made some French onion soup a while back and did just a really silly little short video. Um, totally ridiculous. I was pretending to cry, which I was actually crying for real with my onions, um, but pretending that there was something wrong and Ben walked in. We made a silly video about it. Um, but really, onions make me cry, right? Um, so anyway, I'm just gonna dice up this onion. And so far, I mean, I've cut into it already. Nothing's going on. I don't feel, look at that, nothing. So this trick really works. So I'm just gonna dice up some of this onion to add into my tomatoes. Here we go. So here is the pico, and I chose not to put any jalapenos in mine. I know Ben likes jalapenos, but nobody else does, so we kept him out tonight. Um, and one other thing, I ended up moving the um, wet paper towel closer to me. Um, I actually did not start crying or anything, but I did ever so slightly start to feel the burn, so I just moved the paper towel closer, put it between me and the onion. So just a little helpful tip. Okay, so the rice is all done and the pico is all done. So the next thing that I wanna get started on is the plantains. Um, I can smell the sweet potatoes with the cumin on them. They smell amazing. Um, and after I get done with all of that, I think the only thing that I'm left with is to warm up the black beans and get the avocados and the limes cut. So we're moving right along, we're doing really good. So the best way to cut these plantains is to make a slice three or four of them all the way down, and then to peel them open. Um, if you've never cut a plantain before, they can be really, really tricky. They are much thicker skins than a banana. A banana you can easily peel. Plantains are thick, they're crazy, um, especially ones that are not ripe. Um, they are way harder, and I'm a little bit nervous about these ones. So let's open these up. Hopefully they will peel okay for me. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of cut these at somewhat of an angle, little coin shapes, because we are gonna be frying these. A fried sweet plantain, so good. Okay, let's see if three was enough on this one. I'm just gonna cut the top off. Oh yeah, this one's gonna peel beautifully because it's nice and ripe. These two other ones are gonna be a little more challenging. See how easy that was? This one was perfection. 
Okay, that reminds me of a line from Friends. Any Friends fans out there? Gum would be perfection. Chandler, when he's stuck in the, the uh, ATM vestibule with Jill Goodacre. You know, on second thought, gum would be perfection. <laughs> <laughs> that one cracks me up. Go like that. If you slice them at an angle, what they end up doing is just kind of being longer pieces. Just makes more of a frying surface for when you put them in the pan. And these smell, this one smells really good. I can tell that this one is going to be really, really good. These other ones are not quite as ripe as I want them. I'm gonna fry these until they're just a little bit golden on the outside. Then I'm gonna warm up my beans cut up my avocado and slice my lime. And then we're gonna be about ready to start putting them into our bowls. And I'll show you what that looks like in just a minute. Okay, so we have the brown rice, the sweet potatoes with cumin, the black beans, the plantains, lime and avocado, and the pico de gallo. And we're gonna put them all in a bowl. Okay, so here's the finished product. Here's my bowl over here. I'm not a big pico fan. I do not like cold tomatoes. So I left that out of mine. And here's Ben's bowl. His is overflowing. He's so hungry after working in the garden. He's got his pico. These not only look beautiful with all the different colors and textures, but they taste fantastic. And we cannot wait to dig in. These are awesome. You should totally give them a try. Really easy recipe and they taste delicious.